You sure you've gone to the MW2, yeah? Yeah, literally just down there, just seemed to trying to get back onto the A406 or hand on where to go to get back to the yard. Can get about 15, 20 minutes to get back. Alright, mate, we're right out there, but I'll see you when you get back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to decode and follow NXDN trunking systems using completely free software. All you'll need to have is a computer and two RTL SDRs. So the first thing you need to do to start decoding an NXDN trunking system and to start following it is download DSD Plus. Now this is the current version, DSD Plus 1.101 and you need to download the DLL files as well. And um, once you've extracted them all, just copy all the DLL files into the folder where DSD Plus is and then open it up, which I've already done. I've already prepared it. So this is what you get. The next thing you need to do is find all of the frequencies for the trunking system you want to listen to. So I've got SDR Sharp open here with the control channel and I saved the frequencies here in the frequency manager. Now you don't actually have to save them in the frequency manager, I've just done them because this is how I saved them while I was discovering them. If you're going to be reading these off an online list, like on radio reference or something like that, then that's fine too you don't need to put them in here. What you need to do is go into the DSD plus frequencies file now if this is not here already then just run DSD plus and it should generate it for you. So open it up and you need to paste all of your frequencies in here well not exactly paste them, you need to put them in this specific format which follows this here so first you put the protocol, now you can do NextEdge 48 or NextEdge 96. 48 is the more narrow version and 96 is the wider version. So 96 is around 7 kHz wide and this is around 4 kHz wide. Next you put in the network ID and you find this by opening DSD Plus while you're tuned to the control channel. So I'll show you that now. Here is the control channel I opened. I'm going to go to here and I'm going to open DSD Plus just normally. And you can see it says current network L1190. So you get rid of the L, you don't need that. You just take the 1190 and put that in here. Next is the site number. So this is site 1, and you can check that on here as well site L11901 so you get rid of all that and just keep the one then you put the over the air channel number in this field here so let me go back to that DSD plus again and look at the channel activity so it shows all of the channels here that come up but it doesn't tell you the transmit frequency here it's only putting that there now because I've put all these frequencies in here so it reads the information out of your frequencies file so if I didn't have this data in here it would show just a blank space there and it wouldn't know what channel to tune to once it found a voice signal to listen to so what you need to do is find which each channel is find the frequency for it either experimentally by watching the control channel and then looking at your SDR and trying to find where the voice channel comes up so you can see that this channel became active there just as an example when there was a voice call so you record all of the frequencies from doing that and w with the channels and then you put them in here so this one's ch channel 1 this one's channel 2 uh, let me show you on here channel 2, channel 3 which is the trunking control channel and channel 4 which is also another voice channel like 1 and 2 and then once you've done this you can close the DSD plus frequencies file and you can go back to the folder where DSD plus is and then you need to make a batch file 
like so. All it needs to have is DSD plus and then minus RC. And what this command does is it tells DSD plus in this instance to act as the control channel monitor basically and um, to command an instance of FMP which I'll show you in a minute uh, to tune to the voice channels so let's close this we don't need that open anymore and then let's go down to FMP VC this one here so open that up in your text editor and you need to set the parameters here so I2 tells it the input which is the the RTL SDR that you're going to be using now you can't use the same one that is tuned to the control channel here you have to use another one so number I1 would be the one that's on the control channel at the moment and I2 is the one that is going to be the one we're using for the voice channel O, if you put a number over 255 then it's going to be a port so this is just going to be sending the audio over a port instead of over a sound card so you can just leave this on 20001 P is the PPM correction so you need to find that experimentally um, just by going on to SDR Sharp on that particular RTL SDR it's individual for each one so you can't use the same value as you used in the other ones and then find a frequency that you know how to, uh, what the frequency should be and then adjust the PPM until it's correct on here um, then you've got the frequency which is the default frequency so just put one of your voice channels in here and then we have RV which tells it that this instance is going to be following the voice channel so then go back into the folder again and you need to find VC and open that up and you need to make sure that the port here is the same as the one in the file we were just looking at just a second ago and all the rest of this stuff you don't really need to change you can just leave that as it is so we can close this now and go back to the folder and I'm going to close this DSD plus as well because we don't need that open now so we've got just SDR sharp open now tuned to the control channel and basically this is everything set up now now you just need to open it um, to get it to work so this is set to the control channel and then you open the batch file that you made earlier for CC for the control channel and so this is tracking the control channel and it's um, tracking all the voice calls that happen and it's sending the data to the FMP which we haven't opened yet so we need to open FMP VC this one here and it finds the tuner it finds the SDR and whenever there is a call on here it tunes to the frequency so see this call happened it's this call started and it tuned to that frequency and then once this call ends it will go back to idle and then if there's another call it will tune to that frequency and then once this call eventually ends it will go back to idle or go back to the next call which is active if there are any active so we've got all this up and running it's tuning to the correct um, voice channels whenever a voice call comes up but now we need to open another instance of DSD to decode that data so we go down to VC the batch file we created earlier open that up and it should start decoding all of the voice channel data whenever a voice call becomes active and you can see it seems to be working okay so now we've got all this open and working let me show you around okay so basically what we've got here 
is the source audio. This is just a visualization of that, a spectrum, basically. We don't need to look at that, really. Um, this one I can close as well, because you don't really need that. So what we've got is this. these three windows are the DSD Plus that is decoding the control channel. And it's sending any um, channels to this program here, FMP, which receives the command basically from this bit, telling it to tune to the channel, and it tunes the RTLSDR, the voice channel one, because you have two, one for the control channel and one for the voice channel. It tunes the voice channel one to the frequency according to your DSD plus frequencies file. So I'll minimize this one now. Um, the FMP here, this shows the spectrum and it shows the channel that it's tuned to. And while it's tuned to that channel, this version of DSD is receiving the audio from here and decoding it. And it's decoding the voice and you're gonna be hearing the voice coming out of your speakers. So that was how you can set up SDR Sharp with two RTL SDRs and DSD Plus to listen to a NXDN trunking system. Now, this is not the only way to do it because I used SDR Sharp to listen to the control channel. You can actually use another instance of FMP to listen to the control channel, but I found that in my case, it just worked better using SDR Sharp to listen to the control channel because it tuned slightly better to it and it had less errors. I guess that's probably because I can adjust the bandwidth myself. So I hope this video has been useful. If you're not subscribed already, then make sure to click the subscribe button. And if you found this video good, then please click the like button.